T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off. Shake it back! <laughs> Does that feel good? Yeah! It's hard every time. Dang, Bo. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, let's go, baby. Let's go. Oh. Fired up on a Tuesday. Ah, fire me up. That's what Doug Cook would say. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode two of the Shake and Bake Show with Stevie Fast, Lyle Barnett. And later on, we're going to have a guest, special guest appearance by Double C, Courtney oh, Cabernet, boy. Twisted Sister Enders, uh, coming in here. It looks like we're starting to get some folks coming on. Uh, I think our every other week um, schedule is going to work out. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some scheduling for the next episode a little later. But I did miss you guys. I found myself last Tuesday uh, <laughs> like wanting to get on here and bullshit about racing. <laughs> wow, what you been up to, buddy? Oh man, I'm at the greatest beadlock manufacturing facility on planet Earth. MacFab beadlock's got a little bit of our product in the backdrop right here. Boom, bow, boom, bow. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Stevie's gonna try out a brand new fresh set of our beadlocks I just shipped to Timothy Meisner last week. We have That's a. Right. I'm gonna try to a, rip the whole damn beadlock ring off that thing. Well, please don't do that. Um, if uh, if you're at the Snowbirds this week, which we're gonna talk about later, we got a brand new set going on. Rob Cox. Uh, pro mod that's going to be running down there this weekend, so you can run by and check them out. But uh, we had uh, 22 sets dropped off yesterday, so got plenty to do. Um, not racing this week, which I'm not happy about, but hey, uh, I'm shaking bacon with the shaking bakers, and I'm ready to get ripping and roaring. Got a yingling right here. Come on, yingling. Where you at? Yingling. Let's go. I'm just going to hey, keep I'm, drinking. I got, uh, I got Matt doing some nerding on our box wine proposal. So if you guys tuned in last time, I'm we're swapping from guns to missiles. We've been trying to get like we've been playing nice with Yingling about getting Lyle some money for about three or four years, and I'm going the other way. I'm fixing to shame them. They're either gonna give my man some money or we're getting us a fresca box wine package. Yeah. So I'm getting ready to start pitching that and, next week. And our Cabernet Courtney Enders that we're bringing on here shortly <laughs> approves hey. of that message, baby. Yeah, we had her in the green room a while ago and she's got the straw down in there. She's already about a half a box in right now. Yeah. So You'll since we saw you guys last, um, we were we have <laughs> tried to refine some of our technical stuff, and I have pretty much ruined most of it. Matt was up all at, last night fixing it again. Um, topics for this one, we're not really scripted, but we're going to go over a little later after we get Double C on. We're going to talk about our U.S. Street Nationals <laughs> predictions and uh, what we think is going on there. We got some KTR trivia. Um, Wow, what's your first topic up on the list? I got about 50 things I want to talk about. What you got? Um, I don't know if we want to jump into this right now. Um, I had texted you something about along the lines of uh, claiming records that weren't for real. Oh, yeah. Let's let's get in there. First of all, before we do that, we need to give a shout out. Who's the guy we got to give a shout out to? Oh, let me hang, let me just pull it up. Uh, lead us in a little bit. So we've got I've got him right here. Captain Lucky. Uh, commented on, I assume that's okay. It is on your post on Facebook. Okay. I thought this was good. Just y'all two. Hopefully like most women, she don't ruin this high. Now grant you <laughs> grammar's terrible. So, so we'll go through this. I thought it was good with just y'all two. Hopefully like most women, period. Well, well we're going to wait double C high. address that one. Yeah. And I think I what, uh, I mean, if double clearly, C's in the green room, when you get in there, you can, uh, Dress That's Captain the first guy. thing you should do. Hey, I'm Courtney Anders and Captain Lucky. Fuck you. But um, <laughs> Captain Lucky is a pretty good dude. What he's meaning is, is me and you are so chock full of awesomeness that he feels like we don't need to add in. But we're gonna, yeah, <laughs> we got a plan. It's a crazy plan. Uh, thank you, graphics. We appreciate it. What do you, what kind of graphics do you do? Graphics by TMK. Do you do T-shirts and hats? And are you willing to make them and show them <laughs> right now? Like like tomorrow. Hey, if uh, after Fletcher, hey, I got a funny story about Fletcher. Now we're about to get on to records and testing. True story. This happened to me this weekend. I went and flew to Texas to hang out with a customer. Now I just had an address. I had no idea. So like I get to Texas and we get in a car and I go out there and I'm sitting at these gates and I look up and he's like, you know, told me we're just going to come out and hang out in the woods and shoot some stuff. I get there and I see, <laughs> I see the name on the, 
on the gates. And I was like, I recognize that name. And it's not Fletcher's name, but Fletcher has a really, really badass ranch in Texas, like over the top badass. And me and Fletcher are pretty good friends, but I'd never been there. I go in there and I am sitting in his lodge on his, in his chair. And I was like, this is Fletcher's house. And I didn't even know it. So like I, I sent him a video. He's getting ready to go play New York and kick the shit out of him. And he's like, you're in my house. <laughs> and it was, it was just a funny story. It's something <laughs> that you don't think will happen. It'd be like if I accidentally ended up in Lyle's house. So, yeah. All right. So Rex has been testing. Tell us what we got going on with that and what we need to address. So I, we're going to backtrack just a little bit. It happened several years ago. Um, some phantom numbers started coming out of Steel, Alabama. Brad Edwards was over there? Oh, man. oh, not steel. I thought you were talking about. I thought yeah. you were talking about some phantom stuff from Huntsville when we were going. No, no, I was talking about the it. phantom numbers that came out of uh, that came out of steel. But you're talking about when Brad went to Huntsville. When he went to but, Huntsville, no, three ninety nine, three years about. before so, everybody did it. So just a couple of years ago, uh, when LDR was right on the brink of going threes, um, Scott Tidwell's crew, uh, Paul Gargas behind the wheel, went down there and ran like three ninety four or something, just asinine. And they're claiming the record. And I, you know, stick my chest out and boast it out and say, you know, this is bullshit. Um, you're going to kill the class by claiming these records when nobody else was there. Mine shaft air, clock short. I don't know. The clocks probably weren't short. I'm just speaking uh, out of my rectum right now. But <laughs> so, um, <laughs> fuck you. Uh, so anyway, that was the start of it. So then, like, I guess last week or something like that, Marcus Burt goes and tests uh, Tommy Eumann's car, and they went 66-1 or something like that, and are now claiming the new record. And listen, man, kudos to you guys and anybody that goes out there testing and runs a personal best and breaks a record, shatters a record, does whatever they're going to do. But look, it ain't a freaking record. Stop claiming it. Unless you do it in competition, the shit don't count. Care what nobody says. Stevie, you may disagree. Courtney Enders may disagree. The entire fan base watching this show right now may disagree. But in my opinion, the record don't count. Stop claiming it. Post the time slip. Be, be proud. It ain't a record. I agree. So I, I've been on both sides of this. Uh, when I went 419 in Holly Springs in 2011, uh, I made the quickest pass in radial tire history. I do not think I called it a record. If I did, it was wrong. I went faster on a drag radio than anybody's ever been to this date at Carolina Dragway, and you never even heard about it because it wasn't in an event. So I'm with you. Anybody can go out there and get you a time slip that looks pretty good until everybody else is uh, out there doing it at the same time and there's a set of scales going. It's not a record. It's a personal record. You can yeah. call it. I mean, you can be happy about it, yeah. but don't call it a record. Because when we start yeah, but- doing that, I'll just go out there and run like 250 at Jackson. I'll get – Somebody to kick the beams down there at the three thirty and smoke down through there. Correct. Yeah. So I mean, I you know that was that was really the number one topic. I mean, I know it was short lived, but that was really the number one topic I wanted to cover. And I don't know if we want to. Um, real quick. Uh, obviously, Annette I Summer made, says she agrees, so it's gospel. That's gospel. if the original lady of, of Pro Mod and Pink Pro Street Drag Racing says it ain't a damn record. I'm not calling it. Record. Um. So. I did announce earlier this week after I had announced I was racing and then maybe I wasn't. And then I announced again that I was probably going to race. And then I had to make an announcement earlier this week that I'm not racing the U S street nationals this week. Um, it's circumstances out of my control. I'm, there were a lot of people maybe thought I was sick. I'm not sick. Like actually my bags are packed suits, ready to rip. I'm ready to drive a race car. It was the car circumstance that, uh, did not allow me to run this weekend. And that's it. So we'll not be, I'm not even going. Um, we're too busy here at the shop. If I'm not racing, I need my time is better spent here. Getting, and that's a, that's a tough deal too, because like yeah. me and Lyle are both, we race cars a lot, but we're both race fans. Mm-hmm. And like as bad as I want to go, and I still may come for a day, I may fly down there, but as bad as I want to come spectate, I have so much workload yeah. and it affects me so bad to be there and not be driving. Yeah. Like, it eats me up not to be in a car when I'm at the track. So uh, this is going to be a great event. We're gonna we'll talk about a lot of that uh, when we get box wine uh, Courtney on here. But uh, I'm I'm really excited about that. All right, here's a couple of topics I got. Man, I got a laundry list. Uh, all right. So Ronnie updates. I see some people in the chat asking about Project Ronnie. So here's where we're at with that thing. Um, we got somebody asking what kind of deal. We're doing a blown, a Whipple supercharged uh, LS engine in it. Um, I don't know if you've been following the series. 
and we're getting to that point. So we got rear end housing back from Strange. Everything is done. Got it powder coated. It's beautiful. It's up under there. Axles, brakes. We're getting ready to order wheels like this week. So stay tuned to my social. I'm going to probably get you guys opinion on wheels. I don't know. Um, I see box wines in there already. I think that's a, that's a good story to tell about the one wheel you have. Oh, I did. Yeah, I think we sold that. But if you guys don't know, um, I bought a wheel to fit this thing uh, to see if I liked it. So I bought one expensive, nice ass wheel. And it does fit. It's great. I try to get three more and they're discontinued. So if anybody needs a 20 by 12 with five and a half inch backspacing just for a spare, like your boat trailer or something, call me. I got one. Uh, And only one. And only one. So that's uh, Project Ronnie's coming up. The next episode of Project Ronnie, I want it sitting on the ground and we're going to build a motor. I've been waiting to build the motor for this thing for so damn long, I can't stand it. And everything's done. The block's honed. Oh, she's going to be tight. I'm worried about the damn chassis. I don't, how long of a drive shaft do you think PST can build? What's the longest? Let's see if we got any drive shaft folks in there. What's the longest carbon fiber drive shaft? That we and can, can they to build? and can they two piece it? Is I it don't want to two piece it. I want a big long dong like sticking out there about ninety six inches. Okay. Uh, and yes, I'm gonna bring Ronnie to some events. I'm gonna use that thing as a push car to push Lyle around. Yeah, Steve and I are gonna do right before we uh right before the chassis gets some upgrades, we're gonna enter Cletus's burnout competition and bounce that thing off the walls and keep her on the chip later. What I want to know is so last episode, episode one, I don't know if I offended the Cleter or not. We were dogging out turbos and helicopter pilots. Next thing you know, Cleter FaceTime in. Uh hey, he hadn't talked to me since then. So I don't know if he's like wink wink mad at me or he's like so we're gonna have, we might have to do some grudge burning out with the old cleater. That'd be worth going to Bradenton uh, every time uh, we go to Freedom Factory. Well, I have we so also, much fun. We also probably didn't help our chances by dogging the turbos of getting back in lay mullets. So we should probably. Yeah. Should probably Me and Lyle, uh, if you guys didn't see us at the two point four hour of lay mullets, we uh, totaled out two Crown Vicks and didn't finish the race. <laughs> so a lot of fun though. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, but I don't even know if we made it to barely to halfway before he KO'd two cars. Like I blew up one, <laughs> I blew up one. We did make it to halfway because you got out and it literally looked like you had ran from Evans, Georgia to the Freedom Factory. Dude, it was Red. so brutal. Oh, like God. it is unbelievable driving one of those things that long. Hey Lyle, there's number two. I got Matt nerding on a beer counter, but it's not done yet. You see, if it, Yingling don't cough up cheese, we're going to have a wine counter. Hey, there's Clay Milliken in the chat. How long is your drive shaft, Clay? It's a four-door, so it's got to be long. But that thing's a Dodge or something in it. It might not have enough power yeah. to break the drive shaft. That, Clay's, if you haven't, uh, if you're unfamiliar with uh, with Clay Milliken's Dentley, the truck, I, you, need to go, you, need to, you need to go to his YouTube channel. Yep. Um, and watch that deal for those of you that are that are watching, man. It, it's pretty cool. The story behind it um, and, and all of that is is pretty neat. Hey, we got Hank the Tank Jackson up there. Hank, are they going to let you drive this weekend? Hey, Hank's I'm delivering curious. that set of wheels for if me. If they want to win, they'll put Hank in. Oh, man, with turbos. We're gonna run, I'm going to run Dentley. We're going to do that heads up, Clay Milken. Jackson, South Carolina, house and hook. I'm calling you out if I can ever make smoke. Right now, I got no oil pressure and no heartbeat. Not a thing. All right, so I got – let's take on one more topic that I want to get, and I'm going to bring Double C in. Um, right. This is one that I've been going round and round and round about talking about, but I promised you guys we were going to talk about shit that we, nobody else want to talk about, so we're going to talk about some shit that I have never in the past would ever talk about. <laughs> like stuff like this, you just kind of let it die. I've, I've gotten enough mail and correspondence about the Bahrain One deal that I need to address it. And this would be good a time as any. Um, professionally, it's just better not to talk about this stuff. You guys are my family, and I want you to know where we're at, what we got, and where we're going. So we're going, we're going to bust into it. Uh, the Bahrain One racing deal uh, for me, my part in it has ceased to exist. Uh, we 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 got to a to an impasse. Let's call it crossing a financial bridge where we weren't, weren't able to both get across it. Um, and coupled with my neck injury taking me out of the car, it's just not a not a deal that's going to go the rest of this year. I am very grateful uh, for Sheikh Abdullah, um, Khalid Al Belushi, uh, Justin Bond, uh, Khalil Turani, and all of the folks with Bahrain One. They really have been a family to me, um, and we have won a lot. I think we won 14 races, Rookie of the Year. 
set the world record, won two world championships uh, just with me. So it's been a, a, a great partnership, and I love those guys, and I want to see them win, and I'm, I'm glad Bahrain One Racing is continuing, and I'm a fan, and I want to see them, uh, I want to see them do good. But for me and my racing career right now, we're going a different direction. Um, I am getting into, into team management. I have partnered with Sydney Frigo and Artovinko, and I am more stoked about crew chief in this car this year in NHRA Pro Mod than I probably have been about driving one in a long time. So you guys, this is going to be a double-edged sword. You're not going to see me in the car for a little bit while my hole in my face heals up, but you're going to get to see the unplugged part of me. Uh, Sydney is an awesome dude and encourages it. And for the first time in over a decade, I don't have really a sponsor. So I can kind of say whatever the hell I want. If people don't like it, I don't really give a shit. So uh, it's going to be good and bad. With that said, I got to go back to selling. And uh, it's kind of funny. Me and Lyle are both selling right now. So we're yeah. we're uh, we're out looking for marketing partners. I've got to put the deal together to run in 2024 if I want to do it. And I'm not too good at selling. Uh, I'm much better at spending money than I am. So that's where we're at with the Bahrain One stuff. Nothing negative to say about that team. I love those guys. I talk to Justin Bond and Khaled. I blush you almost every day, and I'm very grateful for what they did for me. It's definitely a very good mutual uh, split. I still want to go to Bahrain and hang out, um, and I love those folks. Love everybody at DIC. So that's the Bahrain One deal, and I think with that, if we don't have anything else before Double C comes in, we need to bring in our special guest. Can we uh, can we include the the move from quarter to eighth in the World Series with her? That's good, right? The what now? The move from quarter mile to eighth mile. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about that with her because she's got some insight on that, being in the business end of stuff. Uh, Matt, are you nerding on the overlay or do I need to nerd that out? I think I got a cool intro for her. Oh, oh she brought her in and took her out. Bring her in. I'll fire the intro. <laughs> <and say, "Dun, laughs> <dun, dun." laughs> there she is. What an entrance. Thank you so much for that, Stevie. That was beautiful nerding. And that was that I, I never said I was smart. All right. So most of you know Courtney, but do you really know Courtney? So everybody has traditionally called Courtney Enders. What they what do they call you that you hate the most? I don't hate it, but I hate it. Erica's sister. I have a name. My name's right. Courtney. Right. And Courtney, I have always this is what I view Courtney as. She is like the twisted sister. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes. Come on with it. This is what <laughs> Courtney looks like now. This is after three Cabernets. Yeah. At least so my you, nails are done in that photo. I had nice yeah. red nails. There we so go. You may, you may see that tonight. So what's going on? Tell us what's going on with you. Are you in, uh, where are you at? Where do you live? I am in Fort family? Worth. I'm here in my, my little home office now that I work virtually like the rest of the planet. So I'm here in my little makeshift studio in good old fashioned Fort Worth, Texas. Heck yeah. Everything's bigger in Texas, they say. I was uh, smoking around close to you this past weekend, and it was fun. The weather was uh, really nice there, and uh, it got really shitty when we left. It was windy. It was shitty cold. today. I'll tell you, I stare right out this window, and it has poured just all day long today. Damn, I missed the banner. So, like, I'm messing up. I'm Wow, we are terrible at our business. So, look, this was supposed to come on before you came on, and then this is supposed to come on when we're talking about your new name. So Courtney's no longer Eric's sister. She's just Courtney. Um, I mean, I'm still I, I claim her. She's all right, I guess. She does okay. Yeah, I mean, she's awesome. She's, Erica, she's not too bad uh, at what she does. One of the greatest natural, talented drivers I've ever seen. Yeah. I've been saying that for a decade. And when I see people bagging on her race car ability, I just know that they're chumps. So uh, I'm a fan. I don't. You can find it on YouTube, but you can go and I watch it way more. Well, I don't care. I watch it all the time. I go watch in-car video of Erica Enders in a pro stock car. And it's one of the most unbelievable things you've ever, if you understand and, and can, and can respect what they have to do to get those cars up and down the racetrack consistently every single run. And it's just, it's fucking ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And she said early on in her career, she, um, I mean, obviously Glidden was one of her, her mentors, but think about it. Jed Coughlin Jr. She sat and watched him and studied him. And she said it was just methodical what he did. And every single time, even to how he like pulled his fingers out as he put it into high gear. And so she just said she took that and you watch it, lay it over. Yeah. Listen, we say Erica can, Erica's Erica, but she does one thing well. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's and a that fact. is beat your eyeballs out. I've obviously I was a 
I guess a, a teammate of hers for the past couple of years in pro or I drove the pro my car, obviously. And I would had the opportunity to go up in the crew chief's lounge at several times and look at runs overlaid. And it's just, <laughs> it's just unbelievable, man. And yeah. that's why I drink wine and go on podcasts. Well, you're good at that too. So we appreciate so, you. Let's talk about, we're got a new segment. Before we get on down the road, I want to talk about Bradenton U.S. Street National Party in a box. I like that. We had some shit happen today. So we're going to have a little segment that's only going to take about a minute or two an episode. And it's going to be what pisses me off. Oh, I love this. <laughs> so as much as I love, let me, let me, I'm sure just, I want to get in the chat here before. Uh, oh, well, uh, you yeah, um, know, let me see. Wow. Well, Oh, I thought I was going to get to tell that guy who uh, was talking shit. Oh, yeah. Talk about Captain, Captain, whoever it was. I just, no, want, tell what happened. I just want him to sit down because I want to know who's watching him so he can just sit on down. Okay. <laughs> see, we can have a, a Courtney is um, what pisses Courtney off. All right. So as much as I love 99% of you, some of you piss me wow. off. <laughs> and I get, I'm just going to put up an example. So here's what happens. I come on episode one last time and I kiss ass to some of the, the Sesame Street Outlaw guys because I respect them. We talk about we talk about how Ryan Martin kicks their ass because he's a real racer and he's got a real operation. We give those guys some props, and that is a venue of of motorsports that I love because it brings fans to the sport. That's exactly right. Right? It it gets eyeballs on the sport as long as we do not confuse it with professional drag racing. That's what pisses me off. So then I'll get some dickhead, dumbass piece of shit that'll post something like <laughs> Sorry, right, I'll get him right to the freaking chip. Yep. I'll That's get right. somebody that'll post some stupid shit like this on the internet, and then I have to dog them out again. Kai Kelly is a more popular drag racer than you will ever be. No one knows who these NHRA guards and don't care about them. In the nice way of me saying this. Is this a good thing? Real drag racing isn't a popularity contest. I don't give a shit what you think and line that piece of shit up in the beams. 10 times out of 10, I will crack his ass. And I'm going to go on record and say that there is not anyone that has ever been on no prep Kings that I will not beat their eyeballs out in a drag race at a track with clocks in a tree. Period. Is there a, oh, gonna, right, that's, that's that's done. Not, the show's over. Stevie's yeah. done. All right. I, yep. I, I'm not even going to get in beer three and this one's over. Clear? Is that, did anybody think I missed what I was trying but to say? You know there? what? This is my problem. And I argued with Jim Howe, and I think that Jim Howe is, is a great dude, and I think he's good at what he does. However, I think his teammate, John Odom, is the worst thing to ever happen in drag racing. But those the, the general no prep Kings fan <laughs> stop down there, purple teeth. There's the general – the general no prep Kings fan thinks that those guys are the fastest thing to ever hit a racetrack. And they, the, the no prep Kings drivers will argue with me and tell me, nah, man, I, we don't think I didn't, we don't think that I didn't say that you guys thought that, but your fans think that you are the fastest thing to ever travel 660 feet by the clocks on a racetrack. And they're freaking wrong. And I, it's, it plays right into what Stevie just said. They just, they don't, now, I, I think it's good that they're watching the sport. I think it's good that they tune in on Tuesday nights when they're eating mac and cheese or whatever. You know, like, I think yep. that's great. But when you start comparing, that's not apples to apples, dog. Not even close. Here's the thing. That is the only – if they took what they watched off of Street Outlaws and then tried to follow the sport, the real side of the sport into it and tune in to NHRA or Flow Racing to watch PDRA, um, those kinds of things, then that would be one thing. But they just – they fragment it and they isolate it in a sense of like, this is drag racing. And for some reason we got to get past that hump of where that's the only mainstream source of drag racing because it's, it's a show. And I love it. I, I want that. It has a great place. And if you look at the impact it's had on our sport, it's been greater than anything we've had in the last 20 um, years. It's great, but please don't ram it in my ass that I can't compete on the TV show. I don't race on a TV show. They point TV cameras at me because I'm good at what I do. There's a difference in both of that. Yeah. Erica's not there to entertain you. She is entertaining because she's good at what she does. That's right. And that's that's uh, the thing. I, I We all can coexist, but every time that happens, I'm going to lash out and call you out. I have an intertwining question for both of you. We're going to talk what you said about records earlier when I was in the green room and then what you just said about – John Odom and Street Street Outlaws. I was at the World Cup Finals this past year, 
And in that GTR, he set a record for the fastest GTR on the planet. And there was like, I was new to that side of drag racing. Like, I don't, I don't claim to have been well-versed before I worked at flow, but I'm getting my eyeballs open to all of this and hearing these stories and following the leads in the pit. And I'm thinking, Oh, that's a record. I'm going to go talk to him. I don't know any better. And I mean, I got just annihilated by claiming that. And so when you talked about records, I wrote that down before you even mentioned him of like, is that a record that can be claimed and who gets to claim these records? And we have a record every freaking pass. Well, here's the thing we could. And, and honestly, I've thought about when he started claiming that record, I thought about this because Scott Palmer is one of my all time heroes and he would do it just because, well, I don't maybe, but like, let's, let's make a scaled down GTR nose, right? and stick it on the front of Scott Palmer's dragster, rip it down through there at some national event somewhere and claim the GTR record, right? Like, come on, bro. Like, and that's, that's, it's another reason that I just don't like that dude. One with the whole Marty Robertson deal at the beginning of the year, when he went to the announcer's booth and said, you know, he cussed Marty because he was claiming to be a street outlaw, you know, and all this stuff. And like, I lost all respect then. And I'll never, I don't give a shit what that dude does what he says, how successful he is. I don't know that he'll ever win a no prep Kings race, but like I lost any and all respect for that guy right then. And he continues to post these very just proud. Vi I mean, I just, he just, it's sour taste. I think Jim Howe's a good dude. I think he's going to win a bunch of races. Um, I think he's got, I think he's championship contender in the coming years, but John Odom can kiss it, dude. I fucking, I can't stand him. Well, we're not stand. sending a fruitcake today. Oh, I'll that, send a fruitcake. I'm glad we're on a show here where our thoughts are muffled and we're we're being politically correct and we're not telling the world what we think. So yeah, here. yeah. Well, this is your opportunity. Yeah. If you got anything, so, like, you I'm sure, to... like I probably just lost another whatever sponsors I got left. I'd probably just <laughs> just shank another one. Oh, guys are real. There's something to be said for when when we all spit off. We all. I'm not a racer. You spit off. I'd like to thank so and so and so and so and so and so, but. People want this stuff, and that's why you've got a thousand people watching, and you'll continue to because you guys give the real, man. Yeah. Well, we may be wrong, but you're going to know what I think. Like, yeah. I don't give a shit. And if anybody out there has any desires to see Stevie and I kind of dip toes into the No Prep Kings water, we do have some opportunity out there. We just, it would help. A little funding would probably help. We're always on here asking for money, but that's what it takes. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, by the way, since we're asking for money, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please click on the bell icon. Click on the like button. You're, sitting here hanging out with two unemployed guys. I mean, dang, you have no <laughs> literally, job. Literally, we're, <laughs> we're bagging out that says you're the you only know, employed motherfucker. On the show, I think right? you had to bring a five ish chick on the show to get like any kind of, of exposure, you know? Of that, oh, it's fuck. time to bring out some shit. All right, I can't yet. I gotta wait. We're getting close though. You gotta get one beer in. No, I'm in. This is not the first. Let's one. let's go ahead and start the discussion <laughs> with uh, the move before we get into the world or in the U.S. Street Nationals. Let's talk about the move in the World Series from quarter mile to eighth. Okay, and why that was a good move. Why we all think it was a good move. I've seen I've seen a bunch of backlash on the internet about how oh, real cars run quarter mile, real cars run thirteen hundred twenty feet. You know, and like while I agree that quarter mile drag racing is freaking awesome, I love it. There's nothing like going 250 in one of them hot rods. Um, the as far as bringing the car count and having the the desire to be a part of what the World Series of Pro Mod is about to be, that was the best move that West Buck could have made for the show. Period. There are tons of competitive eighth mile Pro Mod cars. Tons. And and, there is, and from a from a business standpoint, it does not make sense to try to run 40 cars quarter mile and i mean I'm a, it's twofold because i've done it both I i've been to denver every world series of pro mod from georgia if y'all like buying diesel that's fifteen thousand bucks there and back before you open the truck door when you get there so I, I have done it and i have been out there and i've supported it running quarter mile in one of these cars is not for everyone no we if we had this deal quarter mile and you got 40 guys come and do it or in ladies you're gonna tear up a lot of shit because I always say you can get away with murder in the eighth. And I mean it, you can see, you can drive that. Oh, there's three. They learn hard, baby. You can drive that bitch through the finish line, like a hockey goal sideways and get away with it. 
200 miles an hour, these cars are pretty tame. 250 is a whole different ball game. Oh. Parts attrition, Oof. you can't saw the wheel around, and things happen that aren't even your fault. The tire blows out, and you go flipping into the grandstand. All right, well, let's – Topeka this year. <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a throttle body break, right, when I come yep. through the finish line. I wasn't even going that fast. Throttle body hangs wide open. Jose Gonzalez is out of shape, over in my lane sideways with the shoots out, and – I didn't know really what had happened. I just knew that when I shut the power off, I was sideways. I gave that thing 1,200 pounds of brake pressure. But it was throttle hung wide open and another $400,000 car in my face, right? And, like, at that point, it's too, it's too damn late. You know? Right, and, and yeah, you're just so riding along waiting yep. for the wreck. Yep. That was so, wild. We thought y'all collided. That was insane. From the starting line, that was wild. I got super lucky down there, that's for sure. Yeah, and I mean, we duct taped the front end of that, that thing, move... and I made next round. <laughs> I think the move to eighth mile, and if you, in the way I know I'm right, is by how fast the stuff sells out. Oh, God. Now, there is elite door car racing at NHRA Pro Month. I believe it's the hardest form of racing that, that there is to win, and there's a great place for it. But having these outlaw races for $100,000 that people don't race with competitors that don't race quarter mile all the time is not a good idea. So I'm I want, I think Courtney, I, I, want your, I want your input on the move quarter mile to eighth mile and go. I have an input, but first I'm going to say the bottom line is, is that this is West Buck's race and West Buck can do whatever the hell West Buck wants well, to do because nobody else right. is doing what he's doing. I'm glad you said that because I see all this. Uh, somebody did. This person didn't get invited. This person didn't get invited. I'm, Make like, your own race. I'm like, look, man, it's Wes's race. At the end of the day, that dude could have invited every 7-0 index racer that is locked in for the points at Eddyville or wherever, right? That, right? That's who he could have chosen for the World Series of Pro Mod, and they could have ran 7-0 index. And guess what? It's his race, and that's what he can do. So whoever got chosen, kudos, man. Whether you're his best friend or somebody who's done something cool, like I got in this year because I won the U.S. Nationals, right? Like, whoop, and, whoop. like that's it, it is what it is. So continue on. I didn't mean to steal your thunder. Oh, I feel like that'll happen. Um, no, there, there's a lot, in my opinion, that goes to it. First off, I think I think eighth mile racing is just cool. And when you're trying to bring an environment where you're getting car count and different, what's cool about what he's doing is he's invited people from all different areas of pro mod, right? Like pro mod's like the universal language of drag racing, as he says, in America. And so why would you isolate yourself and, and make it that? And then we've got just run of show, like on my end of it with the flow side and being in venue where we're, we've got a schedule to stick to. There's a lot of variables that come when you do quarter mile racing with those bad boys. And so I think that it was just all around track prep, cleanup, timeliness, car count, everything. And then the gauntlet is even if none of that made sense. Cause West Buck said so. There you go. And in a, and in a, in a 32 or, in a 32 car field, especially the the bump one or, or the 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 spread between number one and number 32 is gonna it, it'll be probably be, it'll be within a tenth. It'll be tight. That and that's yep. why chip draw is cool because it's like and quarter mile, qu but quarter mile drag racing you're not getting that right. Like it's gonna be like the top probably ten might be within a tenth, but then you're gonna start losing them by the you know by several hundredths. And you well, have a two incrementally too, which proves the point that we're trying to do is you've got a drag race up until somebody blows their shit up and then it's not a drag race. <laughs> so it, and that's like you said, uh, back to the chip draw is, you know, we're not going to run the way we qualified, right? Like number 32 and number 31 could draw each other, right? Number one and two could draw each other. You just have no idea how it's going to go. Um, I want J.R. Gray or Ricky Smith so bad. I can't stand it, which by the way, <laughs> I've got J.R. Gray on Friday night. Uh, in the in Friday night fights or whatever they're calling it, I'm going to crush that dude's forehead in. It is going to be so bad. And anybody in the chat that thinks any difference, I got PayPal. I'm sure you've got one of those apps, too, that we can exchange some money on, and I'll bet it right now. I'm going to beat him to every cone on the racetrack. Promise. Just like last time. Just like last See, time. the thing about running on record and not running on hope is that you can just see it. It already happened. Yeah. Yep. Matter of fact, we might need to show it again. And you're going to leave fast no matter what you do. Well, first, the first cone is when we let go of the button. And I bet, in fact, I'll bet anybody on here that I beat him by two numbers when we let go of the button. First person to say they want that bet, you got 100 right now. That on Friday night, I beat JR Gray by two numbers letting go of the button. Good Lord, did you two? Give you got like a mental pump on, my man. Man, yeah. it's going. I think this is a good time to segue into the Farmer Fran segment. 
because we got to get on the U.S. Street Nationals. But before we can do that, we have to go Farmer Franning. So originally, the Farmer Fran episode uh, segment was just to dog out J.R. Gray. I feel like last time we beat him into submission because he has been all quiet on the Western Front. And I try not to kick somebody when they're down. So instead of just picking on J.R. Gray for every episode of Farmer Fran, we're going to spread the love around and we're going to start dogging out anybody that I think is pump faking, faking and drag racing. Drag racing. Oh, if you're a fluffer, if you think you're good and tell everybody you are <laughs> and never win, you are a candidate to be on the Farmer Fran segment. Oh, I love it. So this, <laughs> this week's <laughs> special guest oh, of God. the Farmer Fran segment is none other than our illustrious champion of the Midwest. Shitty car salesman. Shitty car salesman. <laughs> Keith the pocket midget. Ain't he? Oh, Lord. All right. And I'm going to tell you why my main man, the pocket midget, or as I like to call him, oh, Keith Farquad. All right. Y'all seen Shrek when, when Farquad comes riding up on the horse with his leg extensions? That's Keith Haney. So... Keith Haney has been wearing social media out about how he's for immediate release destroy the World Series of Pro Mod. Let's just put a couple of his posts up on the screen. All right, here's one. Please, this is ruthless. All of us Midwest guys are excited to go pick on the East Coast guys. Come on. It's the World Series of Pro Mod, but I'm calling it the Super Bowl. A I want to know when anybody from the Midwest has ever come and brought a Pro Mod to the East Coast and picked on a damn person. Like, Here's my thing. Everybody, listen, everybody can come out. You got your own money. You spend it. But when you start bumping your gums, you allow this kind of shit to come back at you. But- <laughs> You know how many times I have drove to Texas and left with a hundred thousand dollars of somebody's money out there? I don't think I ever went out there and got whooped. Uh, here's another one. I couldn't be more excited to race against some of the East Coast heavy hitters. They talk a lot of smack about us Midwest guys, but we'll all see who's who come March. See, look in the car right there. Normal person's head's touching the top of the thing. He's sitting on a booster seat and he's still too short. And what is that zip tied behind his head? Pool noodles? Yeah, it's probably so you can see. Right and then we got my favorite. This is my favorite. I don't care about the money. I just want to kick everybody's ass. Okay. It's a good thing. Like I posted on, on your social media, it's a good thing you don't make a living kicking everybody's ass. <laughs> You'd be broke. I'm glad you're a better car sales when you are a race car driver. Um, I feel like this would be a good time to play a clip from the last time me and Keith Haney raced. What do you think, Matt? You want to fire something up? If y'all are listening at the end of this, you'll hear what I think about the Midwest Pro Mods that are out there. Was that a million dollar jack race or the bracket race? Was he whomping? Uh, that was me whomping on him, letting him know. That's called a courtesy pat to say thanks for playing. We appreciate it, but you're going to do some more adjustments to your hot rod. Listen, and I have to say, because I'm a member of the media and all the things that I'm going to just say here, Keith Haney did my sister some some nice favors beginning of the career. This is all fun and games, but come on, man. <laughs> you open yourself up to it. I love it. And I hope and he's a good said When he stands on his wallet, he's tall. I think well, he is a good sport. Because any, any press is good press in his eyes, right? So, so he loves it. Uh, so while we're talking about the Farmer Friend segment, I have discovered – a couple of photos of Cabernet Courtney that lead me to believe that you have potentially been hobnobbing with some farmer friend guests. So uh, she hasn't seen these yet and I'm mean, so I didn't show it to her, but we're going to, we're going to just look how nervous. All right. So y'all tell me if y'all watched the last episode of farmer friend uh, and you saw J.R. Gray on here, all right? Is this is this or is this not a striking, striking resemblance <laughs> to Double C right here? I mean, oh lord! I mean, it's pretty damn close. Do you got anything you want to say, Courtney? Um. Hey, yep. Yeah. Nope, nope. Who wore it better? No, I mean, like, I'm just saying, do you want to defend yourself? I mean, you have the money. It was cold. We were at the PDR race. I think Damon actually took that photo. Um, and 
I guess this is taking a turn quick here because those of you who know me, like I, I Jennifer Aniston, friends, 90s style it. Sometimes I'll be nipping and everybody likes to tell me when I'm nipping. And he told me I was, so I just brought it out, you know? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm, I, just, I, I just didn't know it. if you've been oh, hobnobbing sorry. around with, with, with any no. other former friend, potential guests. So I needed, had to dig a little deeper. The moral uh, of the story is like us weekly who wore it better. I did. So. <laughs> All right, so before we get into U.S. Street, because I'm dying to get into this segment, uh, tell us about what you got coming up. Tell us about what's, what's, what's coming, what you got that's about to drop out. Me? Yeah. Oh, is this where I talk about my, my cast? Yeah. So we've got, I actually just had the final meeting today about it, and come February, Flow Racing is going to be um, dropping a new drag racing podcast, and I know everybody has their podcasts and all the things, but... Uh, we are building the the content portion of flowracing.com. So I am going to be hosting a podcast with a plethora of guests. We're going to be covering NHRA stuff, PDRA, Funny Car Chaos, um, anything that Flow covers and anything that's really essential in drag racing. And it is going to be called burr, 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 Right Off Track. There it is. And there you go. There it is. So we don't so, have we don't have a date yet of exactly when it's going to go down. We're trying to to formulate which days it uh, is going to be. I got to compete with guys like Shake and Bake and the West Buck Show and things of that sort. So we may have to get on a uh, alternating calendar program for the Tuesdays and Wednesdays of the world. Yeah, <laughs> and it, the reason you, if you guys wonder why we all are in the Tuesdays and Wednesdays of the world is because it's the only time of the week when we know we're going to be at the shop. Yeah. At least that's why me and Lyle pick Tuesday. Yep. It wasn't to step on anybody's toes. It's just if it's a, a, a Thursday through a Sunday or a Monday, I don't know when I can be there. So right. we pick Tuesday because yeah. like every dentist appointment, every doctor's appointment in my whole life, I'll get set on Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon. I had, I had seven video meetings today. Like Tuesdays are the day. That is when people get shit done. <laughs> so, all right, let's talk about dun, 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 U.S. Street Nationals. Cord is calling me like at, at like a high rate of speed. Doesn't he know? Well, he's at the chassis shop. You guys uh, talk about this for a second. I'll be right back. I'm going to mute me. Oh, well, here we go. Live TV, folks. Yep. Um, so the U.S. Street Nationals obviously coming up this weekend in Bradenton, Florida. Um, they're running a plethora of classes. I know Pro Mod, Pro 275, X275, Limited Drag Radio, Ultra Street. 632. Got, outlaw 632. They've got some brackets. To, they have open outlaw there. Do you know? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But anyway, it's uh Victor and, and his whole crew at Bradenton always run a great show down there. Um, the pro mod races there are always so good. I just ran the Snowbirds um along with Stevie, who brought a roots blower that he was very unhappy with. Um I, cru me. I crushed J.R. Gray there for 10 grand on Saturday night. But anyway, um, they always, Victor and his crew always put on a great race. Uh, it's obviously next door to the Freedom Factory. Uh, Cletus and, and the whole crew there are usually come in and, and hang out. It's, a, it's always a great time. The weather's always good. Uh, my guys that, so my crew, Ben Stoss, Mike Earl, Justin Elks, Anthony Lum, they're, you know, my NHRA Pro Mod crew is down there now and they're bragging about the weather and anthony was playing golf right. in shorts and i'm like yeah it's pissing me off everybody's down there having Get fun i'm in a frozen tundra working my ass but anyway uh are we are we doing are we going to predictions at this point yeah so i don't i missed the first part of y'all so sorry we, were, we just that. we just talked about it's the u.s street nationals yep. and actually I was one of my favorite courtney races talk, of the year open to talk, talk about let talk about flow and their involvement down there so oh i got a flow meme Hold on, I don't want to skip this over. Take over. While we're while we're propping flow for covering uh, drag racing like they do, da, da, da. Bo, 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 bo. they're it's gonna good. send me a check. And I see, I see some people in the comments saying about the circle of death. Listen, they oh have, man, it's terrible. It is, but it, listen, if you listen or if you watch the last few races, like things are getting better. My guy Tom Bobalt's in the production. We have so many new things coming through the pipeline for drag racing. We are. It was kind of the, not intentionally, but just because they don't stream as many drag races as they do dirt or pavement or all that other happy horse crap that I know nothing about. But we're getting those resources. And, and the step one was hiring Kelsey Cartuccio and myself to be able to have 
people who know about drag racing and what we need and what the fans want. So y'all be patient and don't be assholes about it. We're working our, we're working our butts off. Um, but we are, yeah, this, this kicks off the flow drag racing season. And Victor is one of our, our main partners, whether it's through Wes's deal or through his deal, like the Bradenton series that we cover there is an incredible. The track's awesome. And I'm, I'm really excited. So this will be my, my first gig of the year, but I'm not going to be fully on the stream. Don O'Neill, shout out Don O'Neill is going to be the pit reporter and I'm going to be doing uh, long winded content pieces. So there's you my see Don O'Neill. Tell him to go sell me some sponsorship. Tell him God, I'm broke. I need I'm some sorry, money no. and go out there and y'all two together. Just go around to everybody's trailer and just ask I'm them if they want to about today, no. Are you coming, Stevie? I have like on my shot list of like having you help me do some fun interviews. We talked about you in a meeting yesterday that you don't know about. Oh, good. I may. It just depends on how I'm getting uh, our Artovinko car back from the chassis shop. That was the phone call I had to take a while ago. Uh, they're letting me know that all is good. Uh, so I've got a big week week of work, but I may come and hang out. It's one of my favorite races. I love uh, hanging can out you, with Victor. Uh, can you swing by the Carthage, North Carolina Municipal Airport and pick me up? Yeah, I pick you up. We'll go. We don't have any like cabin service, though. Like Maybe get some pretzels. I um, would love that. You guys need to come anyway. Yeah, it'd be good. So, hey, with that being said, questions. we got class by class predictions coming on. Yeah, there we go. About to get into the table. Also, hey. dry January, but it doesn't count if you're working, and this is work. So, you don't have dry January. Hey. You have like a Moy Stevie, damper. Stevie, uh, January. Stevie, chat question: What are you drinking? Me? Yeah. I'm not selling sponsorship. I'm drinking something in a can. <laughs> All right, cool. It's good. As soon as January is out, I'm going to be drinking bourbon. So, like, I like drinking bourbon, especially this time of day. But I am doing dry January. Uh, so, right now, I'm drinking Mountain Dew. Uh, but I promise you guys, once we're out of January, uh, I'll have bourbon with you guys. Out of that but right now, killer. Mountain Dew. All right. So, here we go. Picks for the U.S. Street Nationals this weekend. We're going to start at the – I'm not going to call it the bottom. Are we nope. going to start in the radio class or are we going to start in ProMod? Let's start with the radio class. Let's start with Ultra and go go up. Uh, and Ladies we're going to pick who's going to win. We're going to – while we're talking about this, we plan on doing Shake and Bake Show every other Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we're going to do it again. Anytime there's a big race, there's a yeah. recap, and there we can hash out some stuff about drag racing, you'll get it. So we're going to have a, a show next Tuesday. Ooh, yingling ding number four. Moment Matt, of silence. Where, where? Moment of silence. Oh, that sounds so good. It sounds so refreshing. Um, Matt, where's the uh, – <laughs> yeah, there's our, there's another circle of – Working dust. on it, George. We're working on it. They said we're trying to get in the game. It's harder than you think. <laughs> yeah, no, it is hard. Uh, what's my favorite bourbon? So, I'm a, I don't want to say I'm a bourbon schnob because I like everything. I like everything from expensive bourbon to cheap bourbon. But, like, my go-to is going to be Clyde Mays Yellow Label or Four Roses or – me neither. None of them. I have heard. I know you've heard of Four Roses. I don't drink bourbon. I don't like dark liquor. Yeah, no. yeah well, I do. I do, but it is not comments. good for uh, the next day. At all. No, it is. It's fine. You got it. it, it you. Now you can't shotgun it like a teenager. I mean, like you know, it's not. If you drink bourbon like you drink beer, we're you're talking to Cabernet Courtney. <laughs> she only knows one way, and that's down the hatch. Full prop. Anyway, yep, here we go. Um, so, so Courtney. all right. So we're gonna. So next Tuesday we'll have a recap, but let's pick some winners of U.S. Street. Uh, let's start with Ultra Street. What? What? I missed something. I flipped no. him off. Oh yeah, that's good. Like Somebody just shit. know every time you do that, that's your next meme right there. Somebody's got a me holding my no stupid people sign up with the former friend episode. <laughs> All right, so who you got for Ultra Street? Me. Ladies first. Yeah, ladies yeah first. one of y'all. I've got mine. Late, ladies so, first. disclaimer: I don't. I'm doing my best here. I don't even know. I really wish we had an entry list for all the classes for this deal because I know this is a game to me and I want to win the game. But I got to go with my girl, Haley James. Yeah, and while, we, while we're talking about that, race promoters, I know it's hard to have a pre-entry list because you don't know who's going to come and who's don't. But if you guys have put something like that out, we'll talk about it. Like Just if you've got an interest list, you know. interest list I don't want to pick a winner that's not going. Yeah, right. It and I, I, to be honest, to be honest, Stevie, the guy that we had talked when we talked about this in the green room, I don't even know if he's going. So you may pick somebody that's not even there. But okay. um, I have already chose. I'd chosen Haley James as well. Um, they had been on a tear at the end of last year. Her dad and you know all the 
the the whole crew there that you know her dad's tuning and whatnot. They've done just done an awesome job. Chief, so I've got Haley James, winner in Ultra Street. All right, I've got Dave Fiskus, and I don't know if he's even going because I do not know a way to know that if he's going. But I got Dave Fiskus in Ultra Street. So we got both of y'all going with the lady, and I'm gonna go with the. I'm gonna go with. The if we'd like to say in the Air Candor's pit, uh, bitches on top. Yeah, I hear you. We'll see. I'm writing this down. Who you guys pick? So I can pick shit when y'all are wrong. X two seventy five, Courtney. Yeah, who you got? Two seventy five. I like first on this, um, but I again, I don't know. I don't. Well, then, know. All right, hey, look, before you answer, just come around. I'll go first. Okay. Quit, quit making me. excuses. No, it's not. I don't know who's pick. going. I don't know who's going. I've got my man. The egg roll connoisseur himself, Asian Orange, Mr. Kenny Hubbard, winning X275 this weekend in the beautiful Orange Nova. There you go. Hey, Chase Dees, thank you, brother. We appreciate that. And Thanks, I agree, Dave. there's nothing like a cold feeling. Oh, a, wait, before Chase Dees, you asked me earlier, what do I want to bet to every cone against J.R. Gray? You just just let me know. Go on. All right, Lyle, right, right, who'd right. you pick for? I picked, I picked Kenny Hubbard, X275. All right, who you got there, Double C? I'm going whoever, again, repetition. I'm going whoever's in that Manny car. If it's in, I think Antron may be coming again, but momentum is key, and, and I'm going with my man if he's running. So uh, if if they bring Fred um, – uh, Whoever, Whoever's racing Manny, Fred. Manny, Manny, will, Manny will drive it. Then Manny. Y'all are crazy. Uh, my hometown boys, um, Ryan and DJ McCain, are going to take that. Brand See, new my, car. Brand new I don't car care right if it's a brand new car. These boys race cars for a living. They come yeah, from the CSRA, and they're going down there, and they're going to show up with that thing. No electrical problems are going to happen. Nothing's going to be leaking, and they're going to come out there and win it. My insider told me to pick McCain, so fair. <laughs> yeah, so you're doing inside investigation. I'm going with it on the fly. It's a game. Let's see if we got some folks in the chat that, that agree or disagree. All right, who you got, uh, who you got for LDR? So – there's a rumor, and I don't know if it's true, and I would never reveal my sources, but there is a rumor that a big name from another class is coming to run LDR. So I want on paper for me to say rumored driver because I will not mention it. I'm going to wait for because what I'm not allowed to, because I build trust. Courtney Enders is a is a vault. If y'all, if I find out, I promise y'all I'm gonna tell the world. Well, you can tell the world, but I can't. I gotta keep my people happy. So if, if said So is somebody you know, stepping down to a slower class to kick everybody's ass? Is that what's happening? So if that happens, I'm going there. If not, I'm gonna have to go again. I don't I don't claim to know. I just went back and saw who won stuff. Gargus. All right. Well, we're gonna double up there because I got Gargus to win LDR. I like Gargas. He's fast. Uh, I also like Reagan, but I'm going with my man, Tim Kincaid. He's oh. got man bowler shit. He's got KTR horsepower, and he's going to outrun him on the big end. Okay. So it's going to be it, th – those two will probably race in the finals. It's going to be glorious. Big name guy, whoever that is coming in, is getting shit kicked out of him. And maybe, but I also just wanted to make it clear that, like, rumor mill, I'm on top of it, Gossip Girl XOXO. All right. <laughs> uh, James, Pro Justin Martin will not be there in his Nova. Okay. Go ahead. Just tomorrow. Pro 275. I got my that's a, a tough one because Mo Hall's badass. I gotta go with my man Marcus Burke. Damn it. That was my pick. So I'd I had said Marcus Burt, um, but I'm going to give them uh the uh, I'm gonna give them strike a strike on the claiming the record. So I'm not picking them this week, and that is who I chose. My man Mo Hall. Yeah, it's hard to bet against Winner. Brandon Swikes or Mo Hall and those guys like they have a great team there hauling ass, but I got to go with Marcus Burke because uh, I've ruined a car for a long time. Run a car. I ruined a car for him for a long time, too. Actually, you know what? I'm going to – not because I don't like Mo, but I'm going to – I'm pulling that one back. I'm going to go Mark Woodruff in the old yellow banana Ooh, screwball. The good screwball. Hung up out top, looking like if the Brent pterodactyl. Brent Coochie is over there, he's not going to be able to win because he's going to be some vaginitis leaking out. Vaginitis. Okay. Well, he is there. I'm, I'm going to go with my man Mark Woodruff winning That's Pro 275 in the Screw Blown Corvette this weekend. Love you, Mo, but I'm going to pick Mark Woodruff. Okay, well then, well, then Lance Edmund says if, Tim if, he's, if he's giving up on Mo just to keep it different, I'll go Mo. All right. Okay, the original X Man. I right, do. So you're going Mo. I think what that's a good call. I got Bert, and you're going with the Woodster with Woody, Woody, Chief Woody. San Cucci. Wood. So, are, is next Pro Mod? Is that next? Yeah, no, it's it's pro mod. all right. So, look, I do. 
I do what? not have anybody. 632. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> That's my jam. Right. That's like baby pro stock. That's my jam. Uh, All right. I'm going to go with, uh, with the Voss boys. Okay. 632. I think Voss. Murph's driving that this week. I'm going yeah. with, with them too, Lyle. If Amber Franklin is coming. I'll go with her. <laughs> but I'll go with Amber. Yeah. And I'm not saying that because I think that the Voss guys can't run with her. Just she's PDRA. 632 world champion, and she deserves a pick. But I don't know if she's going. So if Amber Franklin qualifies, that's who I'm picking. If she does not show, then I'll take the Voss boys. Yeah, I'll take the Voss too. And, uh, and I, I like know, that. If, uh, I love the Voss boys. Corey's one of my, my buddies, but I'm going drink water because uh, okay. I'm going drink water. He's, he was coming in hot end of last year. He's going to be making some moves and – I hate to I hate to throw this around, but like you got Johnny Placino helping tuning them around, and it's I think it's going to be not padding my friends here, but I think that they'll be in the mix. And he can leave, man. He's 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 a lever. That's a fact. That is a fact. Wow, you're not doing a good marketing job, Pennywise. Well, it, it clearly it has out when taking a drink, buddy. It hasn't fucking mattered. <laughs> label out, label in, we have... label on my forehead, label on <laughs> Courtney's butt cheeks. Whatever, like it doesn't matter. Yingling doesn't care, so why should I care where the label's at? I'm drinking Yingling. I'm gonna grab the can and I'll drink it. If record, they don't like I would it, wear those pants. Like I wear them. If Yingling wants to send me some yoga pants, I will wear them. Uh, they ain't gonna <laughs> send you nothing. That company's tight. I'm going after the box wine company. Uh, Mike Clark says drink y'all are, water. Y'all are dudes. It's different getting for us chicks out here. We can get shit y'all can't get. A lot of ass. Uh, that's group. why we confide in you for assistance and right. commission. Uh, uh, yeah, so, we got Chris Seagroves of Shane Stacks running LDR, so I'm going with. If uh, Chad choice. Henderson had the Buick there, I'd be going with Chad, but I don't think he's going to make this one with the Buick. I love so me some Buick. If, and yeah, Shane Stacks has been good lately, too. We're moving into the pro mod, and I literally I don't have anybody written down because I cannot decide where I'm going. Let's uh, let's put up the entry list for pro mod before we get in there. Uh, so pro mod, as if you guys don't know the story about what happened when tickets went on sale, entry fee, uh, entry tickets they sold out in four minutes. Um, so like if you weren't there ready to buy a ticket, uh, a tech card, you didn't get in there. And the entry list is stacked. I mean, you got. Rob Cox, me out Matt Cartuccio, uh, David Monday, Blinko, Derek Ward. Derek Ward's been hauling ass lately. Yeah. Like, yeah, he he's running good. Uh, you got they Is Swan still coming? Huh? Is Swan coming? Uh, probably not. If he's there, you won't know. And then uh, Jason Lee, you've been running good on a tear. We got Lyle, the Hitman Barnett, who I ain't gonna ZZ make Top's it. not, not going to make it. Uh, Dean Marina's probably burned the manifold off. Uh, DeStefano, good, running good. Lamana. Jericho's do they're due and they run good. Um, we got Kenny Lang, we got Salimi, and she's been on a tear. She's been running good and kicking everybody's butt. They added some weight to that combination. Actually, added twenty five pounds per forward gear after three gears. I'm curious to see what that does to that combination. Uh, Billy Banica, um, uh, Gene Pont, Steve King, Kurt Stedding. Kurt's been on a tear. He yeah, kicked yeah. my butt in the final of uh, World Street Nationals, um, and uh, He's been running good. Anything that Todd Tuttero touches, yep. whether for Terry Cole is going to be there, uh, good driver, great tuner. Stan Shelton is the man. Uh, if y'all don't know Stan Shelton, you will, because when you race him and he goes 005 every damn time, it sucks. <laughs> He's great. <laughs> nice. That's old Hank the Tank Jackson's car. Uh, we got my, my hero, Todd Tuttero, um, Hondras, Adam Flamhawk will be back out. Uh, good to see the Pez boys and all them back out this way. Uh, that's some Midwest guys. We love it when they come out and support us. Dan Snyder, Abbott, uh, Quisenberry, Halsey, Tidwell, Billis. It's a lot of folks. I mean, think about, like, a lot of times you got eight or nine cars. Like, all these people are winning wherever they're racing at. Chip King, Ty. Ty will kill you on the starting line. Charles Terrell, Matos, uh, Todd Moyer. I don't know who pro line is. They just put – I guess that's all of them. You got yeah, to run them all. <laughs> Justin Jones, uh, Wardenhausen, uh, and Slavin's Mobile. Uh, Glenn Jones, Vettel Gibbs, uh, Luis. Uh, what's Luis driving? I'm sure it's that nitrous car. Uh, it'll be good to see that. We got Marty Robertson coming out. It'll be good to have him. We got Honky Tonk J.R. Gray. Uh, Decker Jr.'s <laughs> hauling ass. Bubba Stanton's broke because I took all his money in Texas, but he'll be out there. Uh, Jason Harris, Scruggs will be fast as shit. Rudolph, fast. Achenbach, fast. Mark Mickey, fast. Harvey, fast. All fast. This is a toss Literal yeah, toss this, this is That's a tough field right there. I mean, it's hard to pick a winner out of that. You got yeah, 10, the, 10, the only one that's a definite out is J.R. Gray. But anyway. uh, <laughs> all 
All right, who you who you got to win? Double C. I I was kind of going back and forth between you who I pick. I'm gonna strangle you. Well, you can't, and I'll beat your ass anyway. Um, I was kind of going towards anything that King Tut touches. I feel like they've got something to prove a little bit here. Um, but I I got to go. I locked in. I even highlighted it. I'm going Melanie because. They've been hauling ass and they just can't get it done on, on race day. In some senses, I feel like even last year at PDRA, like they've got something to prove. And even with the weight stuff, I just feel like I, I feel like they're coming out swinging. I'm going with my girl. I don't think they'll come up and run the roots. I think they'll show up with a screw. Do you? Yep. Either way, either way they, uh, feel hit, they feel hit and they want to make something happen. All right. Who you got, Lyle? God dang it. Man. I know. I already. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm having a tough time. Um, I really like Kurt Stedding's chances. Um, I do, however, feel like that when the pressure's on, I just – and I love Kurt, and I hope he's watching and don't get offended, dude. Like, I I think that when it comes down to it, I just don't know that when it, ha when it matters, he can perform on the starting line. There's, there's nothing wrong with saying that. I um, mean, it's hard so, to do that up there. We all feel I'm going to go out on a limb, and I don't – look, I'm not one to usually – Say it already, Barnett. Yeah. Nope, I'm doing it. Kurt Stedding's going to win. I was going to say All Randy right. Weatherford. I'm, I was going to say Randy Weatherford. And you're going with Kurt. All right, so with Kurt. With Kurt. Um, I agree that a Wild Motorsports car is going to win. Kurt's not going to win it. My man Todd, Todd Totoro is going to win it. The king is Todd's the king. Todd's only enemy of winning this race – is the fact that he's got three or four cars there. Yeah. Five cars. That is the – that's the only reason that made me doubt that he would win it. If Todd Totoro showed up at this race with just Todd Totoro's car, Todd Totoro wins hands down, no question. I'll bet odds. Uh, the only thing that made it's, – it's distracting to run four or five race cars, uh, and he's good. But if it gets down to a deal where it's in the quarterfinals and he's the only one left, everybody else probably go home. Uh, he's, he's just that good. All right, and Pro Mod is the only class we're going to pick the, who you think the absolute loser is going to be. The, the I'll absolute. go ahead and start. So we're going to talk. I want to pick the loser who has no chance, all right, out of the group. I have a three-way tie between <laughs> Keith Haney, J.R. Gray, and Jay Cox, all for no chance of relevance. My boy, Jay. Huh? I mean, I feel you, but, yeah. What well, Are Jay and Keith Haney running this race? I don't know that. I just I had assumed that I would talk shit about them. Just to say to talk shit. Yeah, I don't think that they were on no, the I, list, but I wrote. This I think World Series sure. of Pro Mod is when Jay's coming out. I saw on the West Buck show. Well, there you go. Guaranteed, all them three will suck. They won't well, Jr. Gray, one hundred percent will not win. All right, so that's your guaranteed, definite not guaranteed. Okay, ain't Courtney, winning. you got the balls yeah. to say who you think ain't gonna win, or you me leave you alone. I'm up. Justin. All right, there you go. Not That's no. a good one, too. I forgot about that. I'll move that into my alternate. Listen, the gonna, he'll probably text me. I'm going to get some shit, whatever. But y'all can't. It's it's what we talked about at the beginning of the show. And y'all got all the glitz and the glam, and you come race the big boys. That ain't happening. It happened in Indy when he came, and they let him run first and all the things. It ain't. It's just not going to be. So hey, I, di I did see in the comments that Mark Mickey with his brand-new car went 67 today, which is pretty impressive. That's pretty damn fast right there. Yeah. Halsey, right. and we saw I saw somebody else, Halsey, five rounds, Halsey to win. That's not a bad choice either because those guys. No, I, I definitely. Why has nobody said that? The only reason I didn't pick them is because it's blower air in Florida and running a nitro car five times hard. Yeah. Uh, they, they do a great job. Brandon is brilliant running that thing. But it's hard to win with a nitrous car because it's hard to make five perfect. And runs they in and they won in September. They won in September. They won in December in because December. They, they outraced everybody. They outraced everybody. They, they weren't. I mean, and they were They're good. They were They're one good. of the fastest cars, but they just beat everybody. Yep. They just race smart. Yep. Hundred percent. Hey, I got. Can we have like a sleeper real quick? I feel like I had a sleeper that I wasn't gonna like put on the line for the absolute win, but. I got a sleeper, and I feel like that's Ken Cartuccio's a little bit of a sleeper. Oh, man, he's not a sleeper. Shit, he ran good no, at uh, – he's picking Snow him. That's what I'm saying. He'll be in the here. semis. He semis the fuck here's out the, of it. Here, here's the deal with Ken, though, and I love him. I love that family. I think they're great people. Ken, when it really gets down to it, he's the opposite of not performing on the starting line. That dude will turn it red, and I – I shouldn't say that. because You shouldn't you know, say that. 
I know, but like that, and that's why I don't pick him. That's why I didn't pick him because when it and like Billy Stockland almost kicked my ass in Stevie's pits at an HRA race one time because I even mentioned that <laughs> one time about Stevie turning it red. He was like, "That's not something you." Fuck so, that's my fantasy yeah. sleeper, Ken Cartuccio. Shout out, Ken. All that's right, fair. there you go. All right, so we are. It's time to give away some shit. Y'all want to give away some stuff? Yeah. All right, this is probably illegal, and YouTube's probably going to tear my channel down because we're supposed to not do this. But we're going to play some some KTR and some Lyle Barnett trivia. The way this is going to work, because this is not scripted or planned, we're going to ask a question. The first person to get the right answer and put it in the chat comments. First person, when it comes through, is going to win. And we'll give something away every week. And, like, if we start fighting about it and stuff, we'll not do that, but. I think it'll be fun and uh we'll just we'll come up with some cool shit to give away if you guys will tell us what you'd like us to give away it help we'll we'll give away anything reasonable so stevie what are you giving away okay so we're gonna give away what i'm calling because i really don't know uh ktr swag pack uh matt i don't know what we got we'll give us away i don't even know if i can if what all we got we'll give us away a big ktr gun mat we'll do a keychain some bottle koozies can koozies t-shirt a hat and a hoodie uh, and maybe some stickers, like the whole thing, like the whole thing. Do the guests of the show get this swag pack? I'll no, that's right. why it's called a swag pack. Okay. So well, we're going to give that away, probably a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, we we all get, get. You work for free. You already got a, 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 a central bottle of wine. I saw you get that, sorry. No, you didn't. So, uh, hey, my, Michael Merritt says, good to see you, Lyle. Uh, What's up, Mike? That's awesome. That's great. A date with Courtney. We ain't giving that away. Who wants that? A date <laughs> I don't with Courtney? Know, Listen, trust uh, me, you don't want a date. With that. You don't want yeah, to. There's some things that like some things in life that like sound good until you get them. Like if you want to wrestle an alligator, it sounds great until you get a hold of the alligator. I'd do what it'd be like going on a date with Courtney. She'd be like, I'm not ordering that shit, bitch. I'm like, oh, I'm single. I'm so lonely. Also, hate to get to know people. Get it gone. Courtney, would you? How would you react if uh, my man uh, Floyd took you on a date and like ordered your dinner for you? No, no. I mean, would you like that? No, absolutely. If he not. For you? Okay. Fun fact: I stopped Someone talking to like a guy. That. I stopped talking to a guy because we were going somewhere, and he, without asking me, tried to put his wallet into my purse, and we'd only been out like twice. And I literally stopped talking to him for that reason. So, no, I'm the pickiest mf forever. Okay. <laughs> All right, Lyle, what are you giving away? So I am giving away a free pair of Heat Wave sunglasses and a Beer Money t-shirt. Um, if you are, if you do not win and you still want a pair of Heat Wave sunglasses, you can go to heatwave.com. Enter BARNETT10, all caps, uh, as, you, as you check out, and you get a 10% off uh, discount code with that on your order. So use that. Um, the more you guys use that, the more free sunglasses I get, and the more I can give away on here. It kind of works in a circle. So I'm going to give away a free pair of Heat Waves. I got three pairs in last week. I haven't even looked at them. I'm not going to look at them before I send them to you. I'm going to reach in the box, add it in there with uh, the Beer Money T-shirt, and out the door. Matt, what's my email address? <laughs> uh, Poor well, your court so, his Erica. <laughs> Uh, okay. You so you don't have one. I see that in the chat. Uh, Matt, are you listening? Do you know what my email address is? Okay. All right. All right. So my email is if you win this deal, um, and you're the first person to comment, send me an email, uh, with your name and your address to sales at steviefast.com. And I'll tell you, we're going to pick, I'll, we'll pick the winner right now, but if I get you, Sales at stevepass.com. For mine, I just need your shipping info to Lyle at LyleBarnettRacing.com. So whoever gets this right, I need T-shirt size. And don't tell me you want any particular pair of sunglasses. You get what I pick. Lyle at LyleBarnettRacing.com. Hey, I won the I won the deal, and we'll go from there. All right, here we go. I'll go first. All right, KTR Trivia, Episode 2. Y'all ready? I'm looking at the chat. Matt, are you uh, ready? Because this is going to come through pretty quick. Some people might be stumped by this. All right. At what racetrack in the United States did Billy Stockland and I win our first race together at? Oof. No clue. I'm just going to drink. No clue. <laughs> Yay! 
There should be a bunch of Google internet. Oh, I got in the chat. They are firing in right now. Holy shit. Negative, 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 negative. Dude, the comment section on fire tonight. <laughs> Negative. No. Oh, you can't win. Who? God. Annette Summer got it. Of course oh. she can win. Oh, she wins. Hey. Drag Palooza, ADRL, Rockingham Dragway, March 9th, Pro Nitrous. Ooh. I was we there for the that. Honey Badger. I was there for that race. Yeah, I know. You were there. We took the Honey Badger from Arabia. And flew it over here, showed up the day before the race, kicked the shit out of everybody. Got a they used to be no minimum weight in pro nitrous. And after one race with me there, they now had a minimum weight. We won three races that season, won world championship by five rounds and wrecked pro nitrous. So Annette wins the prize back. Y'all are Ash, killing Ash, me. You sure. I'll give you stuff for free. All right. So Annette, you don't need to send me an email at still Stevie Fast. I'll just send it to Aiken. Uh, all right, what you got, Lyle? All right, so mine is still engine or mine is still internal combustion related, but it is totally removed from drag racing because that's just what I what I wanted to do. I'm out. But my right, question Craig is, Cook, uh, hold on, Fort. Let me stop you. Craig Cook says his shows up before Nets. So Craig Cook, I'll uh, I don't see that on my screen, but I'll send you one too. If you um, if you said Rockingham. Uh, Oh, I've comments move so fast. Yeah, I didn't. I don't even see that on my screen, Darlington SGMP. I see. I see. Matt, can you verify that Craig Cooks showed up before uh, yes. Annette's on your screen? Yeah, I'm, I'm, all, I, I, all I see is his Annette's. No, I, I see him. He's he's on there. He's good. Yep. Yeah, but I see okay. him. All right. So we're going to send you one to email me at sales at steviefast.com and we'll get you smoking prize back. So my, my question is. What are the first names of the two originators of the Briggs and Stratton engine? <laughs> That's why you asked that. What are, what are their first names? Whoop, this stuff. I do not know this. I mean, I didn't either. I had to Google it, but still. Right now, <laughs> folks tough. are Google and internet and like, yep. like the first campers. names. I, and I want both, not just one. I want both first <laughs> names of Briggs and Stratton. What are their first right, here we go. Lyle, Lyle's bureau meter's going up. All right, you just that right, Lyle? Names, Starsky nothing and Hutt. Yet, nothing yet, nothing. Oh, my God. All right, yep, Alan, Alan Cryer or Creer or whatever his name is. Stephen and Harold, that's right. All right, there you go. That's impressive. There you go. Yep. I had no idea. I would have said Briggs and Stratton. Yep, Stephen and Harold, Stephen Briggs, Harold Stratton. The first. All right. How can they get in touch with you about collecting their prize? Lyle at Lyle Barnett Racing. Alan Creer. Um, God, it's just so hard to confirm that I don't get like 50 emails. Hey, it was me. You know, hey, man, I was right. Harold and fucking Steven. Rock on. <laughs> no, I'll, help, I'll help you all uh, navigate those waters on ballet. Yeah, so, Alan, hey, look, Lyle. Man, nerding again. Lyle at Lyle Barnett Racing dot com. Dot com. Alan. I need T-shirt size, and you're getting a free pair of uh, heat waves. So I, in the, in our private chat, I told Courtney, come up with a question, uh, free MacFab Beadlocks T-shirt to whoever answers her question right. She did not have time. This is totally un I, – I literally told her this in the chat. So, Courtney, fire the question. Correct answer gets a MacFab T-shirt. No one's going to get this because no one gives a shit. And Stevie – Don't ask a question nobody can answer. They Don't must ask, like. Mine. I mean, it's I'm about the first me. person to discover the atom. Like, no, 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 this is about me and racing. And you inspired me by pulling the trophy up off your desk. So I have two big car wallies. Does anybody know any, either of them where I, I, Courtney Enders, won a wally in a big car? And I say big car because I only ran junior dragsters in a couple of big cars. So Courtney Enders has two wallies. Give me the location of one of them. <laughs> You don't even know. You probably didn't even know I raced. I did, can I'm you see asking the, if they're Can right you see already. the YouTube chat, you Courtney? Can you see the YouTube chat? Yeah, nobody's right yet. I already know the answer. How I, mean, I can't know? tell you. We need the what location. What about Jeffrey Barker? What about Jeffrey Barker? Nope. Wait, what did he? 
Chat, private chat me. What did he say? I can't keep the fuck up. I have it right here. So I'll prove it. Holy shit. No, 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 no. I'm going to. Nope, but it is Division 4, so Division 4 track. Come on. So, so none of these folks have it yet? There's nope. like 50 people that I'm have done it. None of them? Big Car Wally. <gasps> Boom! Yeah, I see Jeffrey now. Damn it, Jeffrey! I told you he got it. See, mine must be delayed here. Bell Rose, right here. All right, there we go. Bell Rose. Yeah. I knew Barker Max had got it. get that. He did get it. That's cheating. How did you find out? And there's no way he knew that. Oh, wait. Somebody. Somebody say it before? No. No, I'm sorry. Y'all go ahead. Somebody said they treed mine. It was, yeah. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Bell Rose. I won class in Superstock G. Four speed. There was probably only four people up for it, but I won it. All right, Matt. We'll let you verify the Lyle answer as well as the Courtney answer. And you can... uh Reply on Courtney's to uh, Lyle, Lyle, Lyle BarnettRacing.com or just yeah, I'm doing no leg work there. That's all Lyle. We'll get more organized on the giveaway stuff because this is uh this could be like the way I we get our answers in may not be at the same. Yeah, rate I didn't I didn't see it. So if if he did, we'll Alan, get Matt to look back and we'll. You're still gonna get the swag back, so yeah, it is because gotcha. it was I, like so, like a fan or something. I may have. No, he, he freaking he's one of Leo's crew guys, and they get free heat waves anyway. So. Well, no, I'm not Jeffrey. If it was one, I had some Erica stuff, but like Jeffrey, just come and, out and get it. Send, uh, Jeffrey, something for Liv. Or, uh, That's true. Or Junior. All right, what else we got? We're already over. I, yep. Last time we're hey, an hour and 15. That ain't bad. You do that ain't bad. We're an hour and 15 minutes. Huh? I thought there was a QA. Wasn't there a QA? Well, that was kind of. Uh, yeah, we do got a QA. All right, folks, we'll take five or six minutes. You got some questions, fire them off in the chat room and let's uh, see if we can get y'all answered. Now I'm switching back to the chat. There Are we go. you going to be at Funny Car Chaos in Eddieville? I am not. I am not. I'm only going to one <laughs> Funny Car Chaos. I believe we're going to kind of have some contractors help us with content at that deal till we get it, till we get that production level up. Oh, we did have a question earlier, uh, Stevie, and somebody said, any thoughts on us doing World Cup finals? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Um, there's a good possibility that may happen. I've wanted to do that race for a long, long time. I've got, I should be healed up by then. They're talking about clearing me. So I had a cat scan last week. Phones growing together. Good in my neck. If everything keeps going, I got another one in two months and then they're going to talk about when they'll look at it. So they said, if I don't do anything stupid, I might be back in the car by June let's or July. Just, let's just put a, a GTR nose on the Corvette and go, yeah. Oh, break the GTR record. <laughs> be so cool. Please, man. Probably break the, the deal and run. That was the all first time right, I'd uh, ever been to that race. It was awesome. Y'all need to go. Can Lyle run a KTR till all things are ironed out? Uh, we're working on something. With that said, I don't know. Um, we're going to have to put that on a no-fly list right now. We're going to talk about that next next time. Uh, are we and St Schuler still racing together? No, we sold the Shadow. We were mutual partners in the Shadow, uh, and when we sold that, we're not racing together anymore. Phil's still like my best friend, and um, he's here in our shop a few days a week, and we hang out, And uh, but we're actually not actively racing together. Uh, if we get another eight-mile car down the road, we probably I got a, got a good question from Clay Milliken right here because I was right. looking for one for Courtney anyway. Courtney, who is your favorite pro mod driver? Oh, that's gonna be tough. Don't you ain't got to pick me and Lyle because we're here, yeah. or you can because we were like. We're here. I mean, I I will say Lyle is one of my best friends. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Lyle's one of my best friends. But if I can't if I can't choose you two, which is fair, uh, I don't know. I got I mean, I gotta go Lyle Barnett. I'm sorry, I gotta go Lyle Barnett, and I'm not. Yeah. Saying, I he's just my boy. Yeah, Lyle's my favorite pro line driver too. His he's got the character. He's he's a star that needs to be shown. Lyle, Lyle and folks like Lyle are the future of sport. Uh, is Erica running pro mod? No. Will Lyle ever drive for Pat Musi? No. <laughs> you can't answer for him. Uh, I mean, Mark L, how yeah. do you get a job working for me? You I'll answer the Pat Musi question short and sweet. If it if it involved 
me solely driving the no prep Kings car for whatever reason. Like if that whole deal that surrounded the drama, no prep Kings and Pat was looking for a driver and he chose me. Yes. Cause I don't I turn saw, around. Right. I saw somebody ask, how do you get a job in a pro mod pro stock car? Literally when it comes to elite motorsports, we're it's still hiring. Oh, I'm hiring right now. I need to hire 50 people right now. Message me. We need, okay. we need help. <laughs> I need to, everybody needs help. That's the shortest, the, 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 the hardest resource to get. Lyle, are you going to South mountain? No prep with beer money. So back in March of this past year, at the last minute, I packed everything in my shitty little enclosed trailer, hooked it behind my motorhome, and me and five of my boys, it took us 14 hours because I drove 20 mile an hour with a clogged fuel filter in my motorhome for most of the trip. I went up there. We got there at 5.30 in the morning. Chip draw was at 9.30, and I wore that ass out all day long. So if the South Mountain No Prep is on a weekend that I'm free, I'm coming back up there, and I am spanking ass – Again, for that $10,000. So, yes, if I'm available. I've been waiting for this question for so long. Why is Jeffrey Barker called Barker Max? All right, Jeffrey, you can bribe me right now. If you don't bribe me right now, I'm going to tell them why you're called Barker Max. And then we got a question so, from Mike Merritt we got to get to. Well, we've got a little bit. So, Courtney, you can answer this. Isn't Richard Freeman driving some this year? So the Mountain Motor Program is very um, undecided at the moment, but as we're looking, we bought JR Cars stuff that comes with two cars, and uh, we're hoping to get Erica and Richard driving at the World Series of Pro Mod and Mountain Motor. Awesome. He's not going to be full time anything, but he'll uh, he'll make an appearance. I also saw one I want to address. Courtney will flow ever let us pay per race instead of full subscription. The short answer to this very long answered question is we have like 15 verticals, different sports from cheerleading to jujitsu to, mar to marching. There's a lot of reasons why it's, it's consolidated to the way it is, but we are looking into other options and I, I would love for that, but just keep, we'll see. We'll see. Keep, keep voicing your opinion, please. So D'Angelo, you asked Stevie, let's go 484 racing. Nitrous needs you back. All right, listen, I want to go 484 racing so bad I cannot stand it. So if, if, listen, D'Angelo, listen to me. Just just hone in to me real quick. <laughs> For the meantime, because Stevie can't drive, so I'm taking advantage of this because he's a bad motherfucker in the driver's seat. For the meantime, if you will let him tune and let me drive, for the love of God, please. <laughs> Oh, I, 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 I kind of want to pray for a second, but for the love of God, if you would just let the two of us come over there, that's all I'm saying. Call me. I'm not going to oh, say my so number good. out loud, but God, please, man, make it happen. We'll come. I promise. I play, I play a nitrous car like Beethoven plays the piano. All right. Why is it called Barker Max? True story. Me and Barker, Jeffrey Barker, we're going to go pro mod racing. I get Jeffrey. I drag him out of his Pontiac GTO or whatever the hell it was. And get him out of the get him out of the top sportsman, and we're going pro mod racing. So we get Bonnie Rotten, get to Bonneville, to Bonneville, and we get it out there. This thing goes out there, and it just looks like shit. I mean, like if y'all, we it's got turbos on it, and I never tuned a turbo car, and we went out there, and like the first couple runs is pretty fast. And then we changed up and put some piece shit tires on there, and then we went out there and it's driving all over the track. And I told him, I said, man, something's wrong with this car. That's just not doing the the right thing. So we get up under there, and I look on the rear end housing, and we got just a little bit of different four links side to side. <laughs> so uh, Jeffrey Barker, I call him the, I call him Barker Max, like quarter Max, because he had about a forty inch four link bar in one side of the car, and about a seventy five inch long four link bar in the other side of the car. The Bonneville had one inch holes everywhere, so it was treacherous. So what does my dumbass do? I fix the four link, and then we go out there and run it, and never went down the track again. Threw the rear end housing out, D and Q'd. He ripped all the battery cable out of the trunk, wrapped it around the car, spun it around in the middle of the racetrack at a national event. He's coming back toward the starting line at a national event. The safety safari is waving at him to stop. He don't have any brakes because the battery cable, when it got wrapped around the rear end housing and ripped out from the ignition in the front of the car, ripped the brake lines off the car. So they're screaming at him to stop. And he's like, what do you want me to do, jump out? So that's that's Barker Max. That's uh that's why we call him Barker Max. And then we got Mike Merritt asking if I'll ever get on a go-kart track with again. Absolutely not. Mike um, Merritt's awesome on go-kart track. There's there's one I'd like to address again here. Somebody wants to know if I'm gonna get an OnlyFans. 
I knew that was coming. Um, <laughs> there's a hard no on that because all the- balls to the man that asked that one. <laughs> I don't give a shit how many eight hundred thousand dollars said one made in six months. There is a cheapness level I will never ever stoop to. Ooh, you got- I feel like we're getting up on my. I feel like we're getting up on my. Ooh, this is that, me. That ruins, this is Courtney. That literally ruins, gave me the shivers in my back. <laughs> ruins women in drag race. You want to go out here and have a talent and win? Then you go get an OnlyFans. Get it fucking out of here. We're not <laughs> telling the fans why I almost crashed in Norwalk in 2017. <laughs> we're, we're not doing that because. NHRA hates me bad enough. This is great. We should have we should have had an hour for Q and A. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna next time we'll shorten up the rest of the bullshit and do more Q and A. Well, next week there's no reason we shouldn't because you're gonna be there, Courtney. There's no reason we shouldn't repeat. Yeah, we'll see. We yeah, we may do we may bring you back on to do the repeat because since you pick next week's show will be a little shorter. I just want to talk about U.S. Street. Right. What was yeah. good? What sucked? What didn't like? Uh, no, we're not letting you live in uh, ever. Jeffrey, at least not right now. Not after I've told. There's, a, it's like a mandatory cooling off period. Like you can't go buy an automatic weapon for a certain amount of time. After I told the Barker Max story, you had thirty day cool off period. <laughs> we had the opportunity to say no. Hey, my girl Lori, Lori's watching. What up, Lori? Hey, yeah. Lori. Thank you for everything you do for our sport. What you guys don't know, a lot of you fans, is that the the majority of us travel across the country like a carnival, uh, like a circus. And we use only a couple of people throughout the whole industry to book our, our travel and lodging. And Lori Frazier does mine and most of everyone's Unbelievable. that I know. Unbelievable. And I you can call her yep. many times at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I get to the hotel in some state and I've been up for 40 hours and my room is gone. And I call Lori and she answers it and fixes it. And uh, that's a service you just can't get anywhere else. Yep. She is hey, truly bro. like the MVP of behind the scenes of how, how the circus goes around. She moves hey, the entire so NHRA. Maybe, uh, Brad Furman asks, who is more dangerous, Lyle and Pete or Stevie and Phil? Oh, so man. I think, I think there, is, there are times, there are time, we, we have our places and we know where our place is. Stevie and Phil on a big tire, um, it, it, on – Stevie and Phil on anything unlimited horsepower. Like if you just have an unlimited amount of horsepower and it is time to get that thing from point A to point B, I'm not betting against them ever. You put them on a 28-10-5 on a small tire, no prep track, and me and Pete are there, I don't think me and Pete can be beat. That's just where I'm at. Stevie, Super, I'm not going to argue with you. Super Poof said I dampened the show tonight. So you I guess we're going to ruin shit. What? <laughs> I thought I thought it was great. I love it. I, I really wish that y'all would have called me when you were planning this. And then we could have been like, every good sports show needs a chick. Next time, come out in a bikini. Okay, what did I just say? You said no OnlyFans. You can use the tatas to promote the Shake and Bake show for Steve Fast and Lyle Barnett. I've never shown my tatas, and every one of you MFers know I got them. So that just proves the point that you don't need to show them. Right. We, best, we're, we're best friends. Not not one time. Nothing, none of that. Ne- ever not even close and well most people think you're awesome uh steven willing to tune a five second quarter mile import i'll tune anything if i got time right now i'm wrapped up i am i i'm gonna not this guy <coughs> this guy i'm gonna get this guy a world championship right now and that's my number one my eyes on that ball right now uh but down the road uh we'll see i'll tune anything that's got wheels on it um <laughs> Somebody asked if I would fly in your plane with you, Stevie. You I wouldn't fly with me. I wouldn't fly with if me. You go to Bradenton on one day this weekend. I'll, I'll scoop you up. Me. Yeah, I'll scoop you up. All, All right, folks. It. I think this has been a great chat. Matt is yelling at me to please, please get it on. Please get off the thing. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Uh episode two, I think, was good. We're gonna we're, so a lot of you guys don't know where to find this on our YouTube channel. It's kind of weird because YouTube, after when it's live, it's easy to find. When it's done, they put it in the live tab. We're going to re-release this probably tomorrow and put it in the regular feed so you'll see it. And if you guys watch it, I'll hack it up maybe and do a, do a highlight reel or something. But that's where you can find it in the meantime. Uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, spending time with us. I know we've killed an hour and a half of your life. I hope you enjoyed bullshitting and talking about cars with us. Lyle, you got anything to say before we go? Yeah, man. I just, you know, all all you guys that tune in every week, give us questions. Um, You know, we really appreciate it. Those of you that have have subscribed, click the bell icon, tune in every week. Um, It helps us out. Stevie has invested a bunch of money in this deal. 
um, you know, and, and we want to continue to bring it uh, and we can, we will continue to bring it no matter whether we go broke or not. Um, so we, we just enjoy doing this every week. Courtney, um, I think that you'll be our recurring guest. Um, we appreciate you coming on obviously and spending your night. You would have you either drink wine with your dog or drink wine with all of us. So either is your dog doing with us. So Million Dollar Drag Race. Do, do you have do you have me crushing Jr. in the quarter mile? Uh, I, I do because this is America. Oh, dang, I forgot one thing. One thing, real quick. I need a minute, uh, before you guys go. If you guys didn't see Lyle's deal, um, sometimes oh, yeah. it's a mountain. I want to show you a, just a short clip from this. If you have not seen this deal, Bobby Bennett and his team did a great job on Competition Plus. I'm gonna put Lyle on the spot and post this. If you guys are having a bad day, you think you got some shit going on in your life, you think you're broke, can't pay your house payment, go spend some time and watch this and then tell me how you feel. Uh, when you get done. Here's a brief clip um, of Live's deal. The whole thing's on competitionplus.com. The Lyle Barnett on September the 23rd of 2015 was 10 foot tall, bulletproof. You couldn't tell me nothing. And I was racing Radio Verse of the World, which is the pinnacle. It's like that's, that's top fuel of small tire outlaw drag racing. And now it is time for Lyle Barnett. He's coming up here on the right hand side of the racetrack. Cars off the starting line strong, and look at Hancock pulling to a 390. Oh man, look at the fire right side. Lyle Barnett is in massive trouble. Barnett's car completely engulfed in flame now, heading across the racetrack. Huge impact with the left hand wall. Barnett still burning down there. He is in a heap of trouble in that race car, trying to get it stopped. Oh boy, please remain where you are. Barnett's in trouble. Man, if that don't tear you up right there, stop watching the Shake and Bake show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Woo! I, every time I see that, man, I get choked up for real. That was something right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, I meant to put that in earlier, but uh, that, that's a great deal. Like they, they put a lot of work and time in that. I was on yeah. the return road when that happened, and it changed my life forever. Yeah, yeah. Bobby There's did a great. Of, Bobby and his crew did a great job. Um, I've told that story several times, and I'll tell it until the day that I die, because there's, you know, I think that I was left here for a reason, um, you know, and I still, I still feel as though I'm fulfilling that purpose. So. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. You know, that helps Bobby, obviously, if you go to his YouTube channel and watch it. But um, everything I said in there was real and raw, you know, and, and it's it's why I'm here today. Go watch it. I'm not going to say anything else. Huh. All right. Thank you guys for watching. We love all y'all. We appreciate y'all. And uh, we'll see you next Tuesday for a recap of the U.S. Street Nationals. Um, and then I think next Tuesday will be actually February. So I can have a break. And don't forget to buy our merchandise. Yeah, go buy some shit. We're always asking for money. Go find us about a million dollars and then go buy some shit. Well, I was going to say, somebody find these guys money. No way these two should be sitting down. Come on. Thank you, guys. Well Shake it, Mike! Does that feel good? Yeah.